I want to thank you for this emotionally and beautifully made film. Everything in this film, from the writing, directing, acting, how you cast the film, lighting and music were so well done. That your film is based on a true story gives it so much power. And um, watching it now after October 7th gives it even more resonance. And I want us to really get into some of the substance of the movie. What's wrong? I can hear you very well. Oh, he can hear me. Yes, yes, I can hear you. Oh, there's nothing on the screen. You, Nobody can see you but me right now. We're not there on the screen. Oh, yes, I can see an image, yeah. Okay, fantastic. So let me welcome again, Philippe Liguet and Heather Dune Macadam. Welcome. Hi, Bye. everybody. Hello. Uh, Hello. Um, so Philippe, thank you so much for, for inviting Heather into this conversation and for this beautiful film that you made. And I want to get into the substance of the movie, but first let's talk about how you came to the story. This is your 20th film that you've made. Can you imagine? And the this is your second fiction film that deals with anti-Semitism. Your last film is called The Man in the Basement. So my question is, what inspired you to make the film The Story of Annette Zellman? Well, as a matter of fact, uh, I didn't write this story. Uh, at the, whenever I begin to, to, to begin to think about a film, can you hear me? Is it, is it okay? Here? Okay. 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 Sh yep. should, I, should I begin again or? Yeah, begin again. Oh. Thanks. Uh, a story of Anna Zellman came to me as a script uh, by a producer who had seen my previous film, The Man in the Basement, and thought I would be the, the right director to deal with this story. And I was so moved by, by the script and by the story that uh, I, I got the script on, on a Friday, I read it during the weekend, and next Monday I was already in preparation. So, so the, the, the lapse of time was very quick. And instantly what, what uh, touched, touched me is the innocence and the purity of both characters, uh, Jean, Josian, and of course, Anne Zellman. And for me, it was really like, uh, you know, a kind of uh, a symbol of, of some naive and, and frail uh, uh, characters is it okay? Can I carry on? Yes. Yeah. Okay. And and they the, and they will be crushed by barbarity yeah. and and stupidity and prejudice. And that was really what resonated inside me. For me too. You really see the senselessness of war and all this hatred. And you, there's so much of the triumph of the human spirit and how love and art and all this kind of resistance that's more spiritual uh, is evident through, it's a reminder of humanity during these times of, of hatred and, and division and war. So just another word, the, the script was written from a book by a historian, a French historian, called Laurent Jolie, and the, the book is called Betraying, Denouncing, Denunciating the Jews During the German Occupation in France. And uh, this historian went through thousands of letters of denunciation, and there would be thousands of different uh, cases, like for instance, the most uh, uh, frequent way was that uh, neighbors would denounce their other neighbors Jews in order to get back the flat, get get the steal the the, the property, uh, the furniture, pieces of art. That was really a common a common way of denunciation. But there were also much more complex stories, like for instance, uh, a mistress who would uh, turn out who would denounce the, the wife of her lover who was Jew. And, and so she would be arrested. You know, it was very, uh, uh, you, through this, all this example, you have, you, you plunge into the, the dark side of humanity. And here, in the case of, human, of Annette Zellman, it's not the, 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 the betrayal, the denunciation, it's not, has nothing to do with greed or interest. It's just uh, two parents who disapprove 
her son to have a love story with the Jewish woman. So it's really based on prejudice and uh, on uh, uh, pure anti-Semitism. And I thought this story really needed to be told on, on, scre on a screen. Philippe, how did you come, so the Laurent Jolie book, did that mention, that was more the letters of denunciation? How did you happen upon this story? And I understand the real life Michelle Zalman, Annette's sister played a huge, was a huge inspiration for this film. Yes, well, of course, I began, I began, to, I began to meet uh, Michelle Zellman, who, who was uh, Annette's sister, and she plays a part in the film. And with Michelle, what happened was not only uh, the way that she tells about the story and, and the, the, the example of the sister, but I was struck with her by her energy, her appetite for life, her 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 lack of uh, of uh, how to say uh, she she didn't didn't want to to get even she didn't want to revenge her sister she just saw the facts with uh, uh, something very crude very, very objective and and she's the, she she dedicated her life to the memory of her sister and I wanted to, her to be in the film I mean to to film her. And that's why there is this scene where she's present in the film. That's one of the most moving films. I'm going to come to Heather in a second, but of course. Um, that was one of the most moving scenes in the film. And I'm curious, was that something that you filmed with the actor who played the real life Michelle before you started filming or at what point did they meet? Well, and I, I, knew, I knew I wanted Michelle in the film, like, uh, you know, a cameo. But uh, I didn't know exactly how I would uh, I would uh, put her in the film without breaking the the storyline. I mean, the film is obviously a fiction played with the actors, and uh, and I need to to respect the process of uh, the identification of the, the spectator with the the protagonist. But I felt like at the end, suddenly and especially. After uh, uh, after we found out that Annette died in the camp, there, there would be a perfect moment for um, Annette. I mean, I mean Michelle to appear. It really was um, to Heather. Heather, first of all, I'm reading your and your husband Simon's book, and it's absolutely wonderful. And I have it in the back, but I didn't have room to bring it up front. So if you want to hold it up, you can. Um, but I would love you to tell everybody, thank you. I would love you to tell everybody. That's Annette and that's Jean Josian, the real ones. <laughs> Can you tell everybody how you and Simon came to tell this story and your personal connection to the family, but also a little bit, Heather, about what your kind of your life's work has been around, how that connected you to Annette? So I'm I'm very involved in uh, women's stories, girls' stories of 1942 Auschwitz. I, I um, tend to say that uh, my mission in life is to find lost girls at the Holocaust. Um, the uh, camps in 1942 did not keep records of women's deaths and girls' deaths. And, uh, and I covered um, the first transport to Auschwitz. The first Jewish transport was 999 young women, uh, mostly teenage girls. Annette is on the first transport of French Jewish women. Um, and there were men on that transport as well, but that was the first uh, French Jewish women. There were 66 of them on that transport that Annette was on. Of those 66, we know of only two that survived. And both, both of them, uh, those women wrote memoirs, um, and uh, which informed the research in my book for that section of the book. Um, however, I come to Annette's story uh, through Laurence Cares, who is Michelle's daughter and, uh, and one of my best friends. And I've known Laurence, uh, she's married to one of my best friends for, you know, decades. And, uh, and she has often said to me, um, in the summers we get together, we go to the beach in the Hamptons where I live, and she says, you should write a book about my aunt. And... Um, and she's told me the story, but there's bits and pieces and it's all family lore and very sketchy. And then one summer, just a few years ago, right before COVID, she said, my mother has just inherited a box 
of letters and art that she had never seen before. And I and I was like, that's a story. Like, primary source archive. Heather, I don't know if you're moving in and out of a mic. It is a little hard to hear you. Um, but anyway, continue. So you inher they inherited all this art, Annette's art and photos. Yes, so this archive, it's, um, it's in, uh, it was in a box that, that belonged to Michelle's elder brother. And she um, had never seen it before. For 60 years. And so suddenly we had all the information about the net. Can I be heard? Can't be heard? It's very hard to hear you, Heather. Um, I can take off my earbuds. Oh, Philippe, can you mute? Oh, I think you are muted. Philippe, can huh? you mute while Heather's talking? I'm not sure what's going on. But uh, Heather, would you would you like to come on my on my seat? Uh, yeah. yeah, should I try that? And then, well, or you could just mute while the other's talking. I'm supposed to look this way. Uh, they're both at the Austin Jewish Film Festival, so they're both in um, they're both in proximity of each other. Yeah. Um, but Heather, thank you for just sharing a little bit um, about um, how you and Simon had this treasure trove. Let me come back to Philippe, and then we'll come back to you if that's okay. Um, Philippe, I just want to talk about one of my favorite scenes in the movie, which is when Jean Josion writes and sends the poem, Liberté or Freedom, I will write your name, I write your name. And that yeah. scene, the way you directed that with him reading and her reading in the prison and, and, and how they come together, it is so moving. And I'd love you to kind of recite some of the poetry, which you did for me, because it's really Jean's, and then talk about that poem, like what that meant and some of his and his poetry. Uh, the poem uh, is written by Paul Eluard, and the title of, of the poem is Liberty. And this poem was written in in April April forty two, and uh, and the the of course it was violently anti Nazi anti German, and and the poem was uh, 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 printed secretly and uh, uh, people would uh, would uh, take uh, <laughs> the prints you know and hide it uh, un under the clothes and and but it, but it spread it spread like a rumor you know like a rumor of resistance and basically what the poem says is on the, on the walls of the schoolyard on, on the clouds in the sky, on on the pavement, uh, beaten by by rain, I will write your name, and 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 the 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 poetry goes on and on, and and reaches the entire world, on on, on the fistful uh, dogs, I will write your name on the, and and I and at the end of the poem says, I am here to tell your name. Liberty, and and it's very moving. After this long, uh, universal uh, complaint, that it ends up with the word liberty, which means, of course, everything. Liberty during during li being freed by by, of course, from the German uh, and so on, and and also it's uh, almost like a code, uh, an intimate code, and a love code be between uh, uh, Jean and, and Annette, and. Of course, she she's reading this this poem behind the bars of the of the depot, which is a horrible place. Uh, before the prison, there was this this depot where where all kind of people, uh, women, would be put down like a lot of prostitutes, thieves, a dread addict, and and young girls like added Annette who'd done nothing, and 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 it seems like. Uh, the strength of this po poem uh, managed to break out the the, the walls and, and and the iron bars, uh, and, and they, they managed to communicate through this spirit, and that's what I wanted to express in this scene. 
And it worked. And by the way, I cried at the end of the film each time I have. Um, Heather, I'm going to ask you one question, and then I want to open up to our audience for questions for both of you. Um, so I've only read 125 pages of your book, but I know that Jean- I can't hear her. Can you hear her, Philippe? Yes, I can. I can. Oh, I'm not hearing her. Maybe you should. Oh, there it is. Okay. Maybe Sorry. Is it so okay? Yeah. Okay. Sorry. Can you hear me? I took off my earbuds. So, okay. uh, Philippe, you may need to mute if there's feedback. I don't know. I don't know how to mute. Okay. I don't know. Um, let's see. We might. We might be getting some. I think we can. We're getting some help right now on the muting factor. Um, Heather, can you hear me though? If I'm talking, yes, I, can, I can hear you now. It was my fault. Sorry. Okay. Oh my gosh, that makes a difference. Okay. Um. So Heather, I've read 125 pages of your book. That's it. But what was so fascinating is to learn that 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 Annette and Jean were really in these this whole literary circle mm -hmm. uh, at the Café de Fleur in Paris with the likes of Simon de Beauvoir and others. And I, can you just give us a little context, a little before we open up of of that literary world that they inhabited and the artistic world they inhabited? So, um, and is my sound okay now? Is it better? Oh okay, God. great. Um, yeah, so right. the Café de Flore was just two blocks down from the Beaux-Arts where Annette was studying art. And and it was full, you know, every table had a different clique. So you had the artist's table, you had the actor's table. Simon Signoret was 19, hanging out with the actors. Um, Jacques Prévert, uh, Picasso was there. Um, uh, Simon de Beauvoir, Jean Poussat was, uh, uh, came later. Okay. Um, so it's, a, and, and one of the um, tables was a bunch of Sorbonne students. Um, most of them were in philosophy. And, uh, and among the people of that table were Jean Rouge, who would become a very famous documentary filmmaker, Yannick Ballon, who would become a famous documentary filmmaker, Bella Lempert was a philosophy student, and Annette gravitated into this, into the circle and Jean Jossien. And most of them were very involved in surrealism which uh, surrealism, which we may not understand, was a real way of artists um, resisting the occupation and rebelling. And uh, so Annette loved the whimsy of surrealist art and she loved the way of expression and rebellion. Um, and she, uh, she was a very, very intelligent young woman. She was an autodidactic, but not educated through high school. Um, she's provincial. She's come from Nancy, which is um, out in the provinces. Um, she even changes her accent to become more Parisian. Um, she wants to be a city girl. And she, and she becomes a city girl and she becomes accepted. So far accepted that Simone de Beauvoir writes about her in her memoir. And Bella Lempert, and she refers. I love the line. She says, "The Israelites who their their laughter is, you know, how how they sat and they laughed so loudly in the Cafe de Flore. Just they're the delightful young women." Thank you, Heather. Um, do we have questions for our guests? Yes. Fantastic, Philippe. How did you cast the movie? Well, <clears throat> I tried to choose uh, actors that were uh, young, um, full of energy, full of charm. Uh, Annette's, Annette's smile was for me really the key thing. And of, co of course, all the act these actors are very young, they're between 20 and 24. And, and when I, I met Ilona Bachelier, the, the, the young actress, I hide for for Annette. I had never seen her on stage or on screen before, but instantly there was this kind of uh, radiant smile, and I knew she was Annette. And uh, and Jean Jean Josion, well, this actor Neil Schneider, he's got this charm, and and when when uh, I, I had met met together. To train and rehearse a scene, it was there was kind of chemistry, and and it was of course very touching the way to think that this couple in a way is condemned to death, and and they don't know anything about it. They they are just bursting with life and desire. 
Thank you. Any other questions? I need to wave to my niece who's in the audience. Hi, oh, Josie. <laughs> She's a BU student. <laughs> Not waving right now. I believe she's here. <laughs> um, any questions for our guests? Yeah, People in Boston. Yeah. Um, tell us, uh, did you? How did you prepare the actors, Philippe? Like in terms of history, did you give them any sense of that? How do they prepare for their roles, and how long did you film? Like, what was the process like of rehearsal, preparing? For these roles well we, we had a very short time of shooting it was only 21 days uh, i don't know if you represent what is 21 days for shooting but generally this this film should, should need at least uh, uh for uh, i mean uh, six or seven weeks of shooting so so i had the, the idea that we had to, to go very fast but uh one thing was uh, I made a film long before uh, about Boris Vian, you know, the, the, the French uh, writer and also composer and, and his wife. And I cast uh, Laurent Lucas and, and uh, Laetitia, uh, Julie Gaillet in this part. And, and the funny thing is Boris Vian met Anne Zellman in the Café de Flore. And 10 years later, <laughs> I had the same couple to play the, the bastard parents. I mean, the, the parents who, who are going to, to provoke this catastrophe of, of the denunciation. And yet I wanted them, I didn't want them to excuse, to be excused because I think that they are really what happened, what they did is really monstrous. But I, I, want, I wanted to show uh, they in in a way their humanity that that at least for for Jean Hubert uh, Josian the father once he realized that the mistake is made that uh, once Annette was arrested he, he tried to take her out and it is true that he he offered himself as a hostage uh, in, instead of Annette but it tells how far he didn't understand anything about, about uh, the Nazis and anti-Semitism. What, what, what the hell could, could they do with the hostage, uh, like Bier Josian? The, their purpose was to prevent the mixing of race, I mean, the mixing, having a, a Jew, a, a young Jewish girl married uh, a, a Gentile was almost for the German, possible. It was like a, a, a something a, a sacred, and and I tried to, to build the humanity of this character of Jean Josian and the feeling of his guilt. And there is this scene where he meets the parents of Annette, and we feel that he's ready to, to confess, to confess something, and and of course he doesn't. And in real life. Uh, died in 59 without telling anyone about what he'd done. Yeah. He also, um, it, it's interesting to note um, that uh, Guy, the eldest of the um, Zelman children, lived in Jean's apartment uh, for many years and, um, and inherited the art archive, which was incredibly valuable. They had Bacabia, they had um, uh, Dali, and uh, he, um, it, there was a Jean Josien sort of um, altar in Guy's apartment. He thought of Jean as his brother, um, and and uh, Dr. Josien allowed Guy to live there um, until, until he died. Wow, that's amazing. Yes, hi, Myra. Did you hear that? Um, so what was said is that, Philippe, we appreciate your film all the more now since October 11th and everything happening in our country and the world uh, since October 7th. Such a, yes, truly. Oh, thank you. It's, it's, it, there's something about that, you know, I am not Jewish. And uh, when I first decided to make this film, uh, Men in the Basement, about uh, Holocaust denier, um, 
for, for, for many months, uh, I asked myself about uh, whether I was uh, entitled, whether I was, uh, I mean, um, plausible uh, as a director to, to treat with the story. And uh, one morning I wake up and say that anti-Semitism is not the problem of, of the Jews. Anti-Semitism is the problem of every citizen. And that allowed me to, to deal with the story. And I had the same feeling dealing with the story of an German. I, th I think uh, there is something universal about uh, uh, their, their, their love and, their, and uh, the way they, they were brutally murdered. And, and every filmmaker, Jew or not, should be careful about that and about delivering this, uh, this story. Thank you, Philippe. Do we have one more or any? Yes. So you're, I don't know if I got the, you're interested in the lawyer who was working with Annette, but mm -hmm. also the character on whom that person is based? Yes, okay. Oh yeah. And the actress, yes. Such a strong role, yes. Oh yeah. Oh, the story, I mean, this Ooh, character yeah. exists. Yeah. And uh, she, she, was, uh, she was a brilliant lawyer. Wait, do you want to talk about her? Uh, um, uh, Heather, well, I can I can tell you that it. I mean, I think the depiction in the film is very very accurate. Um, she uh, was working both sides of. Um, she she was actually defending many many Jews. Um, the Jews would go to her to help them get out of prison, and then she would take their money, and then she would say she was going to defend them. And then she would turn and let them go off to Auschwitz. So she she was punished after the war. Um, I forget how long she was imprisoned. She was, I think it was almost 10 years. She was very, no? no? She, she, she only had a few months. A few months. Oh, yeah. yeah. It was they said she was having... rehabilitated, right? And then, and then she went back to work as, as a lawyer, like nothing had happened. Yeah, yeah. It's um yeah she's a real she's she's a um there one of many characters that that are, is just despicable for that yeah and it, and it's it says so much you know the scene where Annette has to sign um it it tore her up I mean the letters um that you know she she writes to Jean at, you know begging him not to make her do the one thing that that you know this is why she's in prison she. It, it just, um, they're just heartrending. And this, and the depiction in the film is so powerfully done. Yes, Martin. Wow, I'm going to repeat that. Um, so Martin said that he saw the film before today at home because he introduced the program and that he appreciated the film even more today. And he singles out the last scene in the movie, the wedding scene where we see Annette and Jean come back on. And this message you had of, we still, we survived this, we're still here, um, yeah. rang through. Do you want to comment on that? That's such a beautiful, beautiful note. Thank you, Martin. Well, it's, it's almost uh, like a mythology, you know, the, the eternal couple never die. We, we keep them in our heart, whatever uh, tragic the issue is. There is something that doesn't die with, with them. And, and we carry in ourselves the, 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 the passion for life, the passion for love, and that help us to live. When, when we come back to our lives, to our ordinary lives, even today, you know, in, in 2023, I think this this example, this wonderful example, help us to, to live. And though the film is a tragedy, uh, I, I hope I have not done a, a, a desperate film. I hope there is something with, without ignoring the, I mean, the, the, the cruelty and, and barbarity. Uh, I, I want the film to be a, an appeal to, to life and love. I would like to add right here that um, dancing is very, very important in the Zelman family. And Annette was a um, love to go dancing. She would go to the Bossarique and she would go to the clubs. And um, and so 
that um, <clears throat> that Philippe did that is just a real testament to her spirit. Um, and her brother, Charles, who she wrote all these letters to, Michelle told us um, that at family functions and weddings and things, when everybody else would be dancing, Charles, towards the end of the night, would take a single rose and and dance with it. And that was him dancing with his sister, Annette. So that it's, it's just a beautiful moment in this film, embracing Annette's spirit, truly. I think this is the most perfect way to end this beautiful Q&A with love, light, dancing. Um, I could, I'm tearing up here. Thank <laughs> you for your work, this beautiful film, your participation, Philippe and Heather. Thank Thanks you so much. Thank you for welcome. Thank you. Thank you.